Hey everyone, so today we're going to talk about the one math skill that's really essential if you want to score well on the test. Now the thing is, you probably didn't learn this skill in high school because it's really more of a test specific skill. But when you learn how it works, your score is going to go up, probably by a lot. So I'm going to show you how it works and then we're going to run through a bunch of examples. And also, just for being here, I have a free gift for you. It's a two-week boot camp designed to raise your GRE score five points in about two weeks. So if you're looking for a quick raise in your GRE score, this course is for you. It's completely free. You can sign up right in the description. Okay, this is the single most important, most crucial algebra rule to know. It gets tested all the time on all sorts of questions, especially on exponents. On the test, plus and minus signs mean factor and that simple rule is going to score you a ton of points and I'm going to show you why. So if you start with 3x squared and you add another 2x squared, well that's no problem. That gives you 5x squared. The thing is though, in order to add exponents, you have to have both the base and the exponents the same. And how often do you think they're going to be nice and give you that? Yeah, exactly. Basically never. And this gets tricky because they're going to give you this and x to the fifth minus x squared does not equal x cubed. We can't subtract that directly because while we have the bases the same, the exponents are different. So instead, we need to factor. That means we look at what we have that's the same on each side of the minus sign. And in this case, we have x squared on each side. So we kick the x squared out to the left and we put what's left over inside the parentheses. Now, you know you've done this right if you can multiply that x squared back through the parentheses and get back to where you started. You see, we don't want to change the value of anything. We just want to restate it. We want to rewrite it. And why do we want to do that? Well, because they're going to ask you a question like this. Now, depending on how tired you are of doing quant questions, all you probably want to do is cross the x's off and just be done with this and say, well, x cubed must equal 24. So 24 is the cube root of x. And I guarantee that will be an answer choice. The problem is you can't do it. The minus sign glues together the components in the numerator and fuses them into one statement. And you're not allowed just to cross stuff off on one half of a statement. So instead, we have to factor. Now we have an x on each side of the minus sign, so we factor that out to the left and put what's left over into the parentheses. Now through the miracle of factoring, that x is no longer added or subtracted to anything anymore. It's multiplied and we love multiplication because we are allowed to cross stuff off when it's multiplied. So we do that and then we do some algebra and what we do is we find out that this is the dumbest way possible to write x squared equals 25. So we know that x equals 5 or negative 5. Okay, nice job. Let's try a trickier one. Okay, this is a classic example. Remember, 5 to the 12th minus 5 to the 10th does not equal 5 squared, even though they really want you to believe that. The minus sign tells us as clearly as the test will ever tell us anything to factor. So we have 5 to the 10th on each side of the minus sign. So we factor that out to the left and put what's left over in the parentheses. And just like magic, the 5 to the 10th in the numerator no longer has a plus or minus sign attached to it. It's being multiplied, and we love multiplication because we can cross off things that are multiplied. So let's cross off the 5 to the 10th on the top and the bottom. We do a little bit of arithmetic, and we find that this is, in fact, the dumbest way ever to write 24. Okay, let's try a very high-level question now. Okay, this totally messed up, confusing, and intimidating statement is equal to which answer choice? Okay, don't panic. We know for sure that plus signs mean factor. So the test is just screaming at us to factor that statement, so we will. We have two to the k plus one by every single plus sign, so we'll factor that out. And then we'll put what's left over inside the parentheses. Now we know we've done it right if we can multiply that two to the k plus one back through the parentheses and get back to our original statement. And we can, so that's perfect. All right, next step, let's just add the stuff inside the parentheses and we get four. All right, now we're in the land of multiplying exponents. And when we multiply exponents, that always means get the bases the same. And that's no problem 
because four breaks down to two squared. And now that we have the bases the same, we multiply by keeping the base and adding the exponent. So what we get is two to the k plus three, answer choice D. Very good job, that's a very high level question. All right, this is another very high level question. Take a second, read this, pause the video if you need to. Okay, we're being asked to find the distance between points A and B. Well, we're told the points are equally spaced, so the distance between A and B will be exactly the same as the distance between B and C, and that's good news for us. So all we have to do is subtract 10 to the 17th minus 10 to the 15th to find the distance. Now, before you get all excited and decide that the answer is A, remember that minus signs tell us to factor. Now, we have 10 to the 15th on each side of the minus sign, so we kick 10 to the 15th out to the left and put what's left over into the parentheses. Now, we do some quick arithmetic, and we can see that the answer is D. Okay, great job. Let's do one more. Okay, pause the video and try this one on your own. After you're done, hit play and we'll walk through it. Okay, so the first thing we do is we spot that minus sign which tells us to factor. So on the top, we have 27y squared on each side of the minus sign. So we factor that out and put what's left over, y minus one, into the parentheses. Now on the bottom, we have another minus sign, which is also telling us to factor. So we factor out the three y to the fourth and put what's left over, y minus one, into the parentheses. Now we get to cross off the y minus one on the top and the bottom because the y minus one is getting multiplied and we are crossing off the entire statement. So we are left with 21y squared over three y to the fourth. Now we know that three goes into 21 seven times. So we can do some crossing off and be left with seven y squared over y to the fourth. Now, if we break that all apart, it actually looks like this, and it makes it very easy to see that we can cross off two y's on the top and the bottom, and what we're left with is seven over y squared, and that's our answer, A. Very nicely done. 